I'm Stephen Appleby and I can't believe that I'm here on Lake Windermere about to go out on the lake to talk about Swallows and Amazons, my obsession with those books and how they've kind of run through my life in various ways. Swallows and Amazons was a children's book written in about 1929 and I first came across the books through the BBC TV series which was on TV black and white when I was seven and basically the story is about four kids and they go out on the lake and camp on an island away from the parents and the island though has been visited previously it's not uninhabited there's a fireplace there and things like that and they soon learn that the other people who discovered the island are the Amazon pirates Peggy and Nancy who are also like 12 and 11 or something like that and it's just a wonderful adventure away from the parents in a world just for children. This is completely wonderful because I'm really not used to going out on boats and even though I had a love affair as a kid and right through my life with Swallows and Amazons, it didn't lead to me doing anything with boats or going out on lakes. This is I think the first time I've ever been on a lake or a certainly not a, a lake district lake, the Swallows and Amazon Lake. But um, yeah, so for me, playing Swallows and Amazons was, started out, we had a, I had a toy box. We had a toy box at home, which had a wooden toy box with casters on the corners. And I discovered that I could row it around my backyard with two tent poles. And it worked because of the four casters. You could row one side and steer it around and things at the edges of the backyard were the land and the backyard was the lake so that's like at seven eight and then we started playing you know building dens and i would map the garden um and i put a sort of flag up a tree that was above where the den was and obviously being the one of the amazon pirates was the most fun thing so i used to be captain nancy and which is obviously appropriate in a way and um, the thing about Swallows and Amazons for me really was that the children renamed the real world and they made maps and they renamed the people that they met and the villages around the lake and I kind of learned from that that you can take reality and you can kind of add an imaginary layer on top of it and I think that's what I do in my work a lot of the time use reality but add or, or mess about with it on top. This island is just like the fictional wildcat island in Swallows and Amazons and for me it's like stepping into the world of the books that I read and um, and to be honest I still read those books today. I've, I've often used them when I'm finishing one set of work or moving on to a completely different idea, I'll often take a few days out, read a Swallows and Amazons book, and I feel it's kind of connecting me back into my childhood imagination and kind of like refreshing my imagination before I start on a new project. Dragman, the book that came out earlier this year, is a really good example of, of taking the real world and overlaying it with an imaginative fictional world because it's set in London but an imaginary version of London where I've sort of drawn London from memory so it's inaccurate and I've even made up my own new district and the Dragman plot is sort of a superhero story and a thriller story but underneath it is a story informed by my own trans experience, so hopefully that kind of roots the book in a, in a strong sense of reality. Final Swallow Oaks and Amazon thing in my life is, is that as a trans woman I call myself Nancy and I got that name from Captain Nancy of the Amazon Pirates and that's why I use the name and also I think the whole thing about being a trans person for me is, is kind of reimagining myself. Not exactly a fictional version of myself, hopefully, but a version of myself on top of the original version. I just find all that very interesting.
and it all kind of runs through my life, starting with Solos and Amazons when I was seven.